Hey guys, Crewman here, and this will be my last AMD 7900 GRE gaming video. Uh, my testing with it is coming to an end. I have to send it back to where I got it from. This is a 7900 GRE power color, and in this video I want to talk about the brief overclocking experience I had with it and why it wasn't very good. But that shouldn't take away from the fact that if you want to buy AMD, for whatever reason, be it the more VRAM, whether or not I agree with that is a different story, or you just want, or you like the Adrenaline software, which it is pretty good, or you just want to buy AMD and stick with Team Red, it does not get much better than this in terms of 1440p and the value proposition that the 7900 GRE offers. I will not be doing any comparisons of this GPU to any other GPUs. You'll have to watch additional videos for that. This video is only going to talk about the 7900 GRE. Now briefly, I want to talk about the test bench. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's just an X570 with a 5800X 3D and 32 gigabytes of GDDR4 3600 RAM and the 7900 GRE. It's on an 850 watt power supply and I tested it on a gigabyte M27Q 1440p monitor. I will have links to all of those below uh, if you want them. It will be affiliate links, so they will help the channel. Okay, so the overclocking guide I used was from Ancient Gameplays. I'll put a link down below and at the end of this video, and I recommend you give him a sub. Uh, I was going to do an overclocking video, but there's not much really to say about this GPU, and I didn't have the best experience overclocking it, and frankly, this is a really good video, so why try to top it? So make sure you give Ancient Gameplays a follow and check his video if you want to overclock. Now, the one thing I will say is that I my 7900 GRE that I was playing with did not like when I pushed the memory too high. It kept crashing on Cyberpunk 2077. So I kind of uh, had to lower the memory and raise the voltage uh, a little bit. But that does not mean that his settings will not work for you as Silicon Lottery is a thing and I could have just gotten a terrible GPU. So to see the unoverclock settings of Cyberpunk 2077, you can see what I used, you can see the settings. Essentially it's just um, RT medium, everything medium, everything else is high. And I got 34, 35 ish FPS in the benchmark. And I got about 40 to 45, sometimes 50 ish FPS while playing. Now this is the overclock settings um, for Cyberpunk 2077. Now I will say that this was the game that I saw the best performance increase. Um, everything is essentially the same in the settings and I got about 37, 38 FPS on the benchmark but when I was playing the game I was getting about 55-ish, sometimes 57, which was really good because it was actually hitting a little bit close to 60 FPS mark so I was very impressed with that. Now I did get a crash every once in a while so there was that and I but I didn't I didn't play it as heavily as I did on overclocked um, because I'm not sure if I would keep it with the overclock because like I said I crashed about twice and it was kind of annoying but you know maybe I could have tweaked the overclock a little more but I, again I just kind of wanted to see what it could do. So overall, I think I would probably play with this with a, probably like um, a lot weaker overclock settings where I was only getting maybe like 5 to 6% gain. But at that point, is it really worth it? I don't really think so, for being honest. I would just probably play it out of the box the way it is. As I did play it for about 1 to 2 hours uh, unoverclocked on those settings that I had just shown you right here. And I didn't have any issues and it was quite an enjoyable experience. The next game I tried was Helldivers 2. So the one thing I do want to say about Helldivers 2 is when you are playing in, a, like there's no benchmark, right? So you can only compare in-game settings. So I tried to find instances where I was playing with three or four other people in a very, very busy environment on a higher difficulty when there would be more enemies present. So this isn't perfect, but it, it kind of gives you an idea. So I got about 100 and one FPS in this busy-ish area, right? And I tried to get a comparison with the overclocks, but honestly, as I played with the overclocks, they, they felt like they didn't do anything. Like, I honestly did not see a boost, which it's funny because Helldivers kind of play feels a little bit different than, uh, than other games. Like, I, I don't know how to really explain it other than... Um, 
like your FPS number won't be as high on a lot of games if you have settings pretty high, but it plays pretty well. Um, but the overclocks felt like they did nothing. Like I didn't even really notice an FPS boost. This actually got less 92 FPS, but this was in an automaton mission where we were just kept getting killed and there were a ton of robots out. So I would assume that the non overclocked version would give me the same results. Um, I couldn't really find a good screen grab I liked, so I just kept with this one. But essentially playing it with the overclocks did absolutely nothing. And this wouldn't be the first game that the overclocks didn't really do anything with Helldivers, so I would assume it's kind of an in-game thing. This is Forbidden West. All of the settings are on uh, max, and I'm on 1440p with any upscaling off, getting about 81 FPS, as you've already seen on this video stock. It played fantastically. All you have to do is take off the, um, the any locked frame rates as the game acts weird when you have those on. The overclock here was uh, was not bad. I got slightly above 10%, which seemed pretty high. Um, but I would maybe attribute that to me not doing too much in that scene. 10% overclock seemed to be what I was about, what I was getting about. I had no issues with it, no st no crash stability, no crashes, and no stability issues. But I only played the game for about 25 to 30 minutes, so. I can't really say much, but I there was an improvement. So as I said, my overall thoughts on overclocking. The games that you would want overclocking to really, really excel in, like a high ray tracing game like Cyberpunk, um, I didn't really get that much of a performance improvement. I mean, I got, you know, 10%, but it wasn't a stable 10%. I had a lot of issues and I had a lot of crashes in it, as I said. Um, I didn't see any overclocking result in Helldivers, and Forbidden West, it was fine at stock, and there was no reason to overclock it. I did do a quick two-second trial on Alan Wake. I didn't get a screen grab on it, but I will say it did basically nothing. It was like one FPS, and it was not stable. Maybe it had more to do with my GPU than the settings, but overall, I was kind of disappointed with overclocking this thing. And I do not think I would recommend overclocking the GRE, as it is a great stock GPU. So that said, not many people actually overclock their GPUs, and I'm not going to let it influence my opinion on the 7900 GRE. So I gamed with it, like I said, for almost three weeks, give or take, on and off. And I must say, at 1440p, I was pretty impressed, especially considering that you can get these GPUs uh, I'll have a link down below on Amazon for about $540 right now. I think this is the best value 1440p GPU. Now, if you're going to pay over $500 for a GPU, I want to play it on the resolution that I want to game on at native settings, which is why I did not do anything with AMD upscaling technology. And I didn't play it in 4K because I do not think this is a 4K GPU, and I would not buy this for a 4K GPU. If you... Are buying this thinking you're going to upgrade for, to a 4K monitor down the road? Deal with it then, assuming you even do it. I think you will be quite happy with this GPU at native resolution in 1440p. Uh, on all the games I played, from heavy ray tracing like Cyberpunk 2077 and Alan Wake, which I will say I did start to see the limitations of ray tracing, but I think if you're willing to dial the settings down a tiny bit, it is very much playable to, you know, esports games like Call of Duty, it did everything I wanted it to do. Again, you know, there was a little bit of hiccups at the upper level of ray tracing, and this obviously isn't the best 1440p ray tracing GPU you could buy, but if you want an AMD GPU and you want that extra VRAM because you think you need it, I don't think you do, but if you do, then this is the best 1440p GPU you can buy. I highly recommend it, if you want AMD and if VRAM is important to you. So thank you again for watching my RX 7900 GRE review. This will be the last video, as I said, uh, I do on this GPU. Uh, I will cover it in a suite of 1440p GPUs coming down uh, in the future. So stay tuned for that video and please like and subscribe for more AMD and NVIDIA GPU content. And like I said, I wouldn't overclock this thing, but I think it is a fantastic GPU to play with at 1440p if you just use the stock settings. So thanks again for watching. 
Please hit that sub button and leave a comment down below on what you think about this GPU. Man.